So the pandemic uh, could help uh, free open source software, but unfortunately it was a win for proprietary software. Uh, if we look at the trends uh, over the last 20 years, the amount of um, code uh, uh, in software, the amount of open source code in software has grown uh, and uh, today we have a majority of open source software uh, in uh, in all the applications and we have uh, a large number of uh, linux servers we have a a very large number of uh, uh, linux applications in uh, in the background we don't have a lot of open source on the desktop but this uh, um, was uh, slightly changing uh, when the pandemic uh, uh, started as you can see from uh, this slide uh, in uh, early 2020 linux market share was growing uh, rather quickly for a few months and then uh, uh, it was uh, uh, back again uh, to the current 2.5 3% of all uh, desktop software, of all desktop operating system. Um, why this? This, uh, of course, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, many people started working from home and uh, uh, many of them uh, didn't have uh, adequate PCs or hardware to, for the task. So uh, a few ones uh, or a few people um, switched to Linux and this is uh, the growth that we have seen uh, probably in the period from uh, April to August uh, 2020. But then what happened? It happened that the usual suspect so the larger uh, the large, uh, tech US tech have reacted. Uh, we should never forget that these uh, companies uh, uh, are uh, the largest companies in the stock market. Uh, if you look at the capitalization in 2016, uh, it's rather uh, clear. All the companies of the, let's call it old economy, have disappeared from uh, from the uh, top uh, uh, traded uh, companies uh, of course they're still there but they are uh, fairly smaller than uh, than uh, large tech and uh, if we look at what happened during the pandemic in uh, 2020 and 2021 the this uh, large technology company grew even further uh, during a period where most of the other companies had issues. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, chart gives you an idea of the market dominance uh, from uh, US companies that uh, we have in, in Europe, because uh, we should never forget that uh, these companies are uh, based in the States, but they export their technology uh, to Europe and most of European government are relying on the technology provided by these companies, even if the guarantee is that these uh, technologies are uh, protecting European user more than the uh, US government is not sure at all. Uh, what is incredible is the amount of money that these companies spend in lobby activities. Um, technology uh, is an industry that has issues like any other industry but is not is definitely not the industry with uh, the heaviest 
issues in terms of um, environment or in terms of um, uh, human health. But even if this is not happening, the technology companies are uh, the largest lobby spenders in the world uh, and uh, definitely in, in Europe. These are uh, the lobby expenses in Brussels of the largest uh, technology companies. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, they grew uh, their lobby expenditures uh, with the introduction of uh, the antitrust uh, activities. Uh, uh, Microsoft was uh, already spending quite a large amount of money uh, for this reason. Uh, and they have developed network of lobbyists in, in Brussels that are uh, propagating uh, uh, around Europe. And of course, uh, uh, this reflects on the meetings with uh, politicians, with the EU Commission. If we look at what companies and uh, business associations have been able to do in comparison with what with uh, uh, NGOs and uh, uh, and associations uh, and organizations representing the open source uh, environment. The numbers are amazing and uh, uh, this of course explains why companies are being able to profit from the pandemic instead of then suffering from the pandemic. These budgets have a significant impact, in fact, on EU policymakers. And uh, the, the, these, uh, the people that represent these companies spend uh, a huge amount of money. And uh, uh, the, the consequence of lobbying, uh, say, uh, according to Shoshana Zuboff, uh, the author of uh, Surveillance Capitalism. Uh, she says that lobbying uh, has fortified the business model that violates people's privacy and uh, unfairly dominates the market. And uh, this business model is uh, flourishing uh, without being challenged exactly because uh, it is protected by politicians. Uh, one unfortunate confirmation of this uh, subservience to large uh, tech companies was the story of the human genes being renamed to please excel. Instead of the scientific community going to Microsoft and not just asking but imposing them uh, to uh, patch Excel in a way that Excel could import in a proper way the uh, gene names without considering them as dates. Uh, by the way, LibreOffice has never uh, provided the same issue. Uh, they renamed the human genes. And uh, this uh, is just unbelievable it, because it's, it's a community uh, and a strong community because the scientific community is a strong one that is uh, prone to Microsoft uh, uh, wills. And uh, of course, if we look at the European Community Open Source Adoption Maturity Index and we look at what happens on the desktop, which is the first line, uh, the situation is uh, uh, really incredibly uh, bad. Uh, no open source uh, in 60% of the cases, something uh, ad hoc in 20%, uh, and uh, the remaining 10% is local policy or EC policy, but it's uh, really limited. Uh, and uh, while, of course, if you go to the data center, 
open source is a lot more used uh, than uh, proprietary software and uh, if uh, uh, you go to other areas uh, there is a, a almost a clear majority from open source software because uh, when you go into strategic or uh, business critical uh, server-based application you almost don't have a choice than uh, implementing uh, open source so while uh, open source has been adopted but has not been in the, the adoption has not been increased during the pandemic where there could be an increase uh, that was on the desktop and that could have been uh, an advantage could have been represented an advantage for user especially because the uh, privacy uh, could have been uh, uh, implemented in a better way this has not happened so uh, and in fact uh, when we look for news, uh, we go, we 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 go to the uh, usual suspect. We Google, uh, we go to the media, uh, we we turn on the TV, uh, and this uh, what what is producing this? This uh, is producing the cycle of. Uh, uh, providing giving out our information because uh, if uh, you search for something uh, or you look for something on the on the web this is uh, profiled and your profile is increased and uh, and uh, at the end uh, is uh, digested by uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence to and is transformed into business data uh, this slide just gives you a, an idea of what data brokers are providing in terms of uh, profiles of uh, population uh, we we have profiles uh, with 3000 or even more uh, uh, attributes for each individual by switching to open source software for desktop productivity European government would have regained control of uh, citizen personal data and uh, manage them according to their confidentiality in addition uh, switching to free open source software would have meant moving from proprietary to standard document format with a significant advantage in terms of interoperability uh, proprietary software in fact protect the user by obfuscating everything algorithm and information and this way they also obfuscate the way that use uh, uh, and user data on the contrary free open source software protects the user by applying transparency sharing the source code and sharing all the information so that the user is uh, knows or all, all the information uh, to decide by himself what he can uh, give uh, in terms of uh, personal information and what he doesn't want and to give uh, to the general public apparently this is a no-brainer but the, the issue is that politicians that the majority of them doesn't understand almost anything about technology sees the big tech as part of the global system and therefore sees the big tech issues as blocker for the entire digital transformation process instead of uh, seeing them uh, correctly as an issue for the digital transformation process they see that as a as an issue because it's a blocker of the digital transformation process uh, so they and they don't see free open source software uh, the same way so uh, instead of uh, seeing free open source software 
as a potential solution to the digital transformation process. They see that as a, they ignore it as a potential solution and uh, uh, trust only uh, the uh, proprietary software, uh, which is widely used in by governments, even if uh, there are sentence by the Court of Justice of the European Union that say that the standard uh, contractual clauses of uh, the proprietary software shouldn't be used and shouldn't be allowed in Europe. And uh, uh, these uh, slides give you a, 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 pers a, a feeling of uh, how much these clauses are uh, ignored in some cases, or even if they are known for their uh, issues, they are adopted. 95% uh, of the companies of small and medium uh, enterprises uh, with 2,000 more employees uh, use standard contractual clauses, which means that they give out their data to uh, big tech and uh, they made it them available to the US government instead of keeping them by for themselves. And uh, unfortunately, the cost of reassessing all these is extremely high or uh, but and, and therefore uh, there's not a willingness of uh, of uh, tackling the issue. What would happen if uh, the public code was uh, the, the code developed with public money was uh, public as well. We would use uh, standards, we would uh, rely on interoperability, we would uh, uh, be able to read the documents, we would be able to avoid the locking strategies of uh, Microsoft, uh, which is uh, has been even uh, capable of uh, publishing a manual on how to lock in your clients. Uh, if you don't find it online, uh, I can send it a copy to you if you want to learn the strategy to lock in customers. Uh, and uh, the issue is that we keep on using uh, formats that are uh, used by malware to carry uh, viruses, Trojans. Uh, this is a Kaspersky lab research in 2019 that says that 70% of uh, malware, global malware, is carried by office documents. So by using office documents, by standardizing on office documents, we expose European citizens to this risk. Instead of uh, using a truly interoperable uh, format, which uh, would uh, avoid these issues because it would be an open format, and being an open format, it would be easy for uh, expert people to understand if the format is being used to carry information or to carry malware or to carry um, components that are not supposed to be there. So we still have people that uh, European user that are amazed by the fact that online companies, uh, large tech companies seems to know everything about them, uh, knows when they go to sleep, know when they get up, uh, knows everything about their credit card, knows everything about their family, uh, and uh, are even able to suggest doctors or uh, solutions to their personal issues. 
All this uh, uh, is called uh, surveillance capitalism, uh, and this is what has allowed big tech to profit from the pandemic instead of suffering from the pandemic. Uh, and uh, by ignoring uh, the what is happening, uh, European uh, uh, the European politicians are uh, putting at stake the human expectation of sovereignty uh, over our own life and authorship of our own experience, as Shoshana Zuboff says in the age of surveillance capitalism. We are Re the risk is that we are losing uh, the control of our uh, life and of our contents of what we produce because that is managed by someone else. And uh, the politicians uh, that should protect us are, on the contrary, protecting the people that are uh, uh, picking uh, the information from our activity and are using it for their business and are using it to the advantage of other governments. Thank you for listening. Uh, happy to answer your question if you have some uh, on the topic. I understand that this is not a trivial or an easy topic to discuss, but if we don't face it now, we will uh, find ourselves in a terrible situation quite soon. Thank you again. It just goes live, but I was asking you about the recommendations. You no, know, no, I, I, I know. And, uh, uh, so the the it's uh, the problem. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we have a, a general issue. We have a general issue in in Europe, which is quite a uh, uh, big one because uh, uh, we our government are uh, relying too much uh, on U.S. based technology, and of course. Uh, we don't have uh, i don't think uh, the, the we, we should be clear that we are not against the us technology uh we are against uh, us technology uh which is uh, um too much close uh, to uh, the us government objectives uh we have different governments we have decided in uh, in the past to have uh, uh, different privacy laws and uh, there should be a higher level of respect for this. Uh, I Today I see the situation uh, being uh, uh, really bad uh, for Europe uh, and for other continents, but not really positive even for the for US. Uh, we are really surrounded by big tech uh, and uh, uh, for instance um, I my son works uh, as a chef uh, in a restaurant in a, in a um, skiing resort in the Alps every month uh, we go and visit him and uh, I usually book uh, my room uh, through booking because it's convenient and uh, uh, just because I booked the room, the day after I start receiving emails from restaurants uh, which are in the area. Uh, do you want to rent a car? Uh, do you want, uh, do you really need, uh, you know, health services? Uh, uh, and why? Uh, I mean, I booked a room and that should be mm, my task. And I'd l let's say that what we could uh, find uh, uh, appropriate would be uh, the site asking me, would you mind if we share the information that you will be in that area so that you can get some help? Okay, in that case, uh, 
we should decide by ourselves and we should we would be aware that there is this sharing of information but at the moment there is no share there is no uh, sign of this and uh, um, last time uh, I'm uh, I, I, I'm still but I will soon be um, be out of the OSI board but the last time uh, I uh, went to an OSI meeting uh, in the States uh, I uh, when I was at the customs uh, in uh, uh, I think it was San Francisco but the city is not important uh, the guy uh, said oh you're here for the OSI board meeting uh, uh, sure but how the hell do you know you are a custom officer in the US uh, and uh, I've just exchanged emails with my fellow board members in the in the US so um, if I tell you that I'm there for the OSI board meeting okay but why you already in the system there is already the fact that I'm there for the OSI board meeting uh, so that's not pleasant especially if you understand uh, why it happens and of course uh, yes this uh, network of lobbies that of course then talk to each other europe to the states and vice versa uh, the the largest lobby agencies are uh, in contact with them we really are uh, surrounded by uh, the big tech uh, and of course, the big the, the big tech uh, being all based or mostly based in uh, in the state and in China, according to their headquarter, will uh, not share. I, I'm, maybe they are unwilling to share the, the information, <coughs> but the reality is that if you are uh, active in a market, uh, then the government of that country uh, has some influence on 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 you in any case so i think uh, we should the people should uh, learn uh, that uh, uh, the situation that we have today is not a good one that we should uh, be more careful for our privacy and uh, uh, we should uh, education should not be in the in the hands of uh, uh, big techs uh unfortunately is so i'm going to ask you the next question but we're about to run out of time so folks who are watching live can come join us in the breakout room which uh will be listed uh in the chat but uh but we'll continue here and say um uh you know someone asks it's it's bradley asking if there's anywhere in the world that doesn't face this corruption seeing how the eu um, <laughs> suffers with so